welcome back to my channel, this is Sal speaking and welcome to a new episode of Roman Cookery. Today I will show you an amazing recipe, Aeneas Focaccia. In the Aeneid, Virgil tells us about Aeneas' vicissitudes. After Troy's destruction by fire, he is looking for a new homeland. The poet Virgil describes a malevolent prophecy formulated by one of the most horrific harpy. Before finding a region to occupy, Aeneas and his companions will roam and wander around cities. They will eventually experience such a terrible hunger that will induce them to eat anything they will find. This actually takes place when the Trojans take a break by the city of Laurento, an old ancient Italian city on the coast of Lazio. It is there, after eating all the food and being still hungry, they start biting the white flatbed pizza that nowadays we call schiacciata di focaccia. It is very interesting to say that they would use this focaccia as an actual plate, so they would put food on top of this focaccia. How fantastic is that? As we all know, starving is not pleasant. Nevertheless, this episode is to be considered a good premonition. This means that the wandering is soon coming to an end and that these poor guys will soon find a new homeland, a new place. This is what Aeneas ate, this awesome focaccia. So come with me, come to my kitchen and I'll show you the recipe. Well guys, to get started we need some sage, so... Okay, for these recipes we will need 10 leaves of sage, okay? This is really fresh, I don't know if you can see it, this is so fresh, amazing. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Finally, okay. So, what do you need to do with it? You need to, first of all, you need to chop it, okay? So, let's, let's do it. I'm gonna be chopping this to small pieces. Because this is gonna give the aroma to a recipe, okay? Very good, really like the smell of it is fantastic. I hope that you can find sage in the States, I think you do. We usually tend to put sage with when we cook chicken, you know, we just put sage with it, it kind of gives a great taste, especially to potatoes, you know, oven baked potatoes with sage are just fantastic. If you haven't tried it, you should try it, and I'm sure you have. Okay, we have reduced, okay, we have chopped the sage, the sage is basically ready to go, fantastic. So I'm gonna add a little bit of milk, actually, yeah, basically this amount here. which in cups is a fourth of a cup basically, okay? So remember to bring the milk to room temperature. So let us dissolve the brewer yeast in the milk. Let's add 
add to it our chopped sage. So for this recipe we will need one, one cup, okay, one cup of flour plus half a cup of flour too. So this is these are the quantities, okay? Very good. So we will add our milk with our yeast and our sage as well in the middle. So we'll make a hole like this and we will put the milk and everything here like you have seen it here. Okay. Don't, don't make a mess like I'm doing, but this is the concept here. Let's add a little bit of salt. Okay, and the olive oil as well. Don't let really escape, just together and let us start mix the old thing together here. So for this recipe I'm using the same flour as the other recipes but you can use any type of flour you like you know. I have like a little bit less than half a cup of olive oil as well. So we're gonna be mixing the whole thing together. Now that our dough is formed, we need to let it rest in a hot place for about two hours. So So let's cover it with a cloth and let's let, let it rest for for 2 hours actually from now, okay? Here we are. Here we are the time has come. Our dough didn't rise too much, kind of rise a little bit, but I have, I think I know why, I think I know why, but the overall quality of the dough is not perfect, it's not perfect, see how it's kind of breaking down, the thing I suggest you to do, and I truly suggest you to do this, you need to mix it really, really, really well, mix it like like when you make bread, it's the same, the same pattern. So you need to follow the same pattern as when you mix bread. I didn't follow that pattern because uh, the book didn't tell me to do that because I'm following this book, but the, the result is not the result I wanted. So please make sure that you mix it, that you mix it for at least 15 minutes or you put it in a, in a blender or whatever you have, just do it because that will make a difference to the recipe, okay? 
Also, this is the very first time for me making this, so forgive me if it's not perfect. But so put a little bit of olive oil in your pan here. Okay. Okay, very good. I'll just put it here. Let's see. That's the, the unfortunate result. That the dough is not consistent in this case, but we'll see how it turns out. You know, you never know. But from what I see, it's not 100% consistent. So, but we will see. It is very elastic and it seems like it's very good. See? It's not broken. So, let it rest for. 30 minutes so you can even cover it for 30 minutes and then after 30 minutes you can stick it in the oven okay okay let's stick it in the oven and see what happens so after 15 minutes 20 minutes we'll see how it goes Well, I just took this out from the oven and guess what? I dropped it on the floor and it kind of broke. Um, my suggestion guys is that you mix uh, everything very, very well. I think that's one of my mistakes. Uh, the result is still somewhat nice, you know. Um, the taste of it is good. I think it's very good. It's very tasty. The sage gives it like a lot of taste. But let me know how it goes because you know I've never done it before. Maybe another time I'll, I'll make this recipe again. It's been a lot of work, a lot of search, and um, it's still good. I mean, don't make me wrong, it's still good to eat, but I don't think it turned out to be perfect this time. Well, guys, thank you so much for watching, and remember if you feel sad, you better call some. Bye!